So underneath the larynx, you've got this endocrine gland called the thyroid, and it's one of the largest glands in the body. Uh, it secretes two main hormones, thyroxine and chiodothyronine. Um, it also secretes calcitonin, which is involved in calcium metabolism. Thyroid secretion is controlled by TSH, which is secreted by the anterior pituitary gland. And it also has uh, parathyroid glands, which are sort of embedded within it. The thyroid itself is located between C5 and T1. Uh, it consists of two lobes that are joined by an isthmus. Um, each is about 50 to 60 centimeters long, and it diverges laterally at the level of the laminae, or the Adam's apple region. So the thyroid gland has a number of ligaments that keep it in place. Its posterior medial aspect is attached to the side of the cricoid cartilage by the ligament of Berry. And there is also an anterior suspensory ligament that extends from the superior medial aspect of the gland to the cricoid and thyroid cartilage. Anteriorly, the thyroid gland is covered by the strap muscles of the neck, and these must be retracted to expose the gland during surgery. I couldn't draw this thing because I'm I kind of failed art at school. But basically, the thyroid gland has a thin inner capsule which extends into the gland, dividing it into lobes and lobules. And the structural unit of the gland is actually a follicle which consists of a simple layer of epithelium surrounding a cavity, as uh, shown here. The thyroid gland is supplied by the superior and inferior thyroid arteries. The superior thyroid artery is the first branch of the external carotid. It runs lateral to the larynx and then superficially on the anterior border of the lobe. Uh, it sends branches deep into the gland and then runs towards the isthmus, where it anastomoses with the contralateral artery, as I'm drawing here. The inferior thyroid artery rises from the thyrocervical trunk. It rises and becomes posterior to the gland, so most of this artery's branches penetrate the posterior of the lateral lobe. Uh, I've tried to draw it here, but uh, it took me ages to draw this properly, but when I finished drawing this thing, it kind of looked like this. So there's your thorough cervical trunk. Superior to the superior pole, the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve runs through the superior thyroid artery before turning medially to supply the strap muscles which are around this area. The recurrent laryngeal, uh, which is this nerve, uh, can be found after it leaves the thoracic outlet. These nerves are prone to injury during surgery. As mentioned before, the thyroid is made up of follicles, which have a cavity inside them, and they are lined by cuboidal epithelium, which I'm going to redraw here. Uh, please imagine these cells going in a full circle, I kind of messed up when I recorded it. So, anyway, the follicles themselves selectively absorb iodine from the blood for the production of thyroid hormones, and they secrete T3 and 4 into the blood. When they're active, the cells uh, change from cuboidal to columnar. Follicular cells synthesize enzymes and thyroglobulin uh, involved in the production of T3 and 4, and these enter the lumen. Iodide is co-transported along with sodium, into the colloid lumen, and enzymes add iodide to thyroglobulin to make T3 and 4. Free T3 and T4 enter the circulation via the follicular cells after being released from thyroglobulin molecules. Alright, this is the last bit. Uh, the hypothalamus produces thyrotropin releasing hormone, or TRH, and then that acts on the anterior pituitary to release uh, thyroid stimulating hormone uh, that acts on the thyroid follicular cells causing increased stimulation and release of T3 and T4. Control of thyroid hormone levels are via a negative feedback system so uh, the, T and, the T3 and 4 actually block the release of TSH from the anterior pituitary gland. 